Back for the briny seas to your comfortable little phone and or PC. Here we are once again. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Cap'n Rez and I gotta tell ya, we got one mother of a show planned for you today. For one thing, we're gonna be playing Space Camp for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the chest here to check out a little bit later. Mystery, baby. Mystery and excitement. And, of course, we have the mailbag sitting in the corner. The bag that tells no tales. And we may even get a question from one of you folk right uh, live. Is that right? Kind of live. It's live for me. Not really live for you. Okay. So, uh, thanks for coming. Why Huntsville, Alabama? I mean, what's going on in Huntsville, Alabama? Let, let's be honest. Here, hold on. I... I'll, I'll look it up. Let's see. Huntsville, Alabama. What's to do in Huntsville, Alabama? Do in Huntsville. I mean, we'll check. Here, top ten things to do in Huntsville. What do we got? Uh, you got uh, the Harmony Park Safari. Okay. Uh, U.S. Veterans Memorial Museum. Okay. Madison Nature Trail, Green Mountain. I mean, all these places are nice. Uh, but that's not why we're going. Okay? We're going for one special young lady, youngish lady, in my life and in yours. This week, we're going for mom. Yes. It's Mother's Day this week. A day that all of us can celebrate in one shape, way, shape, or another. And in my case, I'm lucky enough to have uh, uh, a great mom. A great mom who's seen me through thick and thin for a, a long time. And I was trying to think what we could do to celebrate um, what a great mom she is to me. And that's why we're going to Huntsville. Because you see, before my mom was a mom, and before my mom was what she is, which is a nurse... My mom wanted to be an astronaut. And you're probably saying, Captain Rez, everybody wanted to be an astronaut when they were a kid. Well, that may very well be, but I think it's, just, I think it's especially um, poignant for baby boomers. Because they were at a very impressionable age in the 60s. You know, kind of like teenage years in the 60s and what happened in 1969 man reached the moon i think it was the first time that that space travel was really within you know humanity's grasp it really felt like we were going somewhere and as a kid that must have really been an amazing experience you know someone of my generation or beyond we we probably don't get it in the same way someone like my mother would get. So she has always wanted to go into space. And she's always, uh, you know, watched a lot of fiction. I know she's written a couple of, uh, you know, not to, not to bust you open there, but uh, she, she's done a, a couple of uh, Star Trek fan fiction books. She got me started on Star Trek. Uh, and she's always, you know, put astronauts on a, on, on a high pedestal. So I thought, you know... If we're going to take her somewhere for Mother's Day, if we're going to take the ship somewhere in her honor, we should head on down to Huntsville because Huntsville, Alabama, believe it or not, is where Space Camp is located. And that's what we're playing today. Space Camp for the Nintendo Wii. I think we picked this up a few months back with a bunch of other Wii games. And who would have given it a second thought? But, you know, how many games out there take place at Space Camp? How often do you even hear about Space Camp? I remember the first time I heard about it uh, was a movie back in 1984. It was uh, called Space Camp. And it took place in Huntsville, Alabama at, at the Space Camp. It, I think Space Camp opened in 1982. And this movie came out like two years later. So it was the first time that I'd ever really been exposed 
to um, kids getting inter interacting with the space program. And it's a pretty cheesy movie. In fact, I... Excuse me. <laughs> Did you get for eating before the voyage? Uh, I, I remember watching that movie and seeing it a lot as a kid because my mom had it on VHS. Okay, so it's like she would put it on when she was cleaning and it was like, you know, just a cheesy movie. It's about these five kids who get launched into space. They, they, they attend space camp and somehow get launched into space. It's a cheesy movie, but it's a feel-good movie. And uh, I, I just saw it so much as a kid that it really stuck with me. And I thought, if we're going to do this show, I better watch the movie one more time. So I watched it and it was like, geez, just nostalgia rushing back seeing that. So, uh, you know, I just want to... I want to thank you, Mom, for doing all you can throughout the years. We're going to head out to Huntsville in your honor. We're going to strap in. We're going to explore the space camp, get into some adventures, have some laughs. I'll try my best not to roast you too much, but you never know. <laughs> Maybe share a couple stories from our past. Uh... You know, so we'll see what happens, okay? Do I have anything else to add? How far away are we? I think we're start starting a little early, which is fine. Um, I'll say one thing about this game. It, the, the controls, the game's got a lot of heart, okay? But this is the kind of game that you would probably be able to download on your tablet for free. It almost looks like this game was... was programmed so that it could later be moved down to a phone or something like that. My mom, she was she's into Farmville. A couple of years there, she was huge into Farmville. And this has that kind of same isometric view. So, it's kind of simple. Uh, you know, you're dealing with you know, Wii controls. This game would totally be classified, I think, if it didn't have any sentiment behind it. This would totally be set, classified as shovelware. This is like, there's just so many games, you know, for the Wii that had all these obscure topics. Uh, again, I don't think that anyone's ever done a Space Camp game before. Okay, all right. So I think that's it. Um, let's have some fun for Mom. You know, ask yourself, as we do this voyage... Where would you take your mom if you could take her anywhere in the world or in the galaxy? Okay, let's get started. It's Space Camp for the Nintendo Wii. All right, I'm giving you audio, giving you visual, and we have audio, and here we are. Let me get my phones, engaging phones. AKA earphones. All right, great. And we're in. Here we are in Huntsville, Alabama. Right in the middle of Space Camp. And look, there is a hustle and bustle going on. There's kids running around exploring, having fun. And this is us here. This is the closest I could get to my, uh, my fat butt. <laughs> this is me at, at age eight. Look at all the optimism in my eyes. Oh my God, what happened? So this is our commander. I'm not going to deal with him right now, but he has given us an assignment. Uh, we'll deal with that a little later. We'll get down to business later. But now let's let's just be a kid. Let's just explore space camp. And the greatest thing about this game is you really can do that. There, there's a lot to do. Let's see what. Here's a robot. Let's talk to him. The moon only has one sixth of the Earth's gravity. See, now I didn't even know that. And that's great, you know, th this game is chock full of fun little educational stuff. And just fun little stuff. Remember when you used to do this as a kid? God. I used to spin my friends. Make them close to vomit. Alright, so there's all kinds of hallways here. And all kinds of adventures to get into. Oh, and this guy following us around, this is our ARP. 
Uh, to be honest, I forgot what that stands for. Maybe uh, Automated Robot Pal. I don't know, but he he helps us out. There are four main machines that you can train on in Moonbase Zero. Ore extraction, fire suppression training, meteoroid defense, and item fabricate. Try out each of these, and then return to Commander Wiggins. All right, cool. We'll get, to, we'll get to business later, ARP. Right now, I want to go down this wing here, and we'll see what we, what we can get into. I think this is a great touch. They have posters around Space Camp, and it's just so you can learn a little bit along the way. Gemini 4 had the first spacewalk by an American in 1965. I think that's great. All right, so let's head up north, and we'll get into some of like the traditional stuff that you hear about in Space Camp, especially here. This was, uh, I remember this thing totally. In pretty much, you know, every space camp or like space movie, like uh, astronaut movie, they've always got this thing. To get into it, and here we go with the shovelware. Oh no, hey, whoa, whoa, I didn't mean to. Okay, get me back in there. Let's take a look at that, if you please. All right, here we go. Shaking it. And I have to shake my little hand to keep this thing, keep this thing going. All right, all right. There you go. Fun. Okay, let's see what else is down here. Hey, there's these lockers all over the place. You can open these up and you can find uh, clothing. Oh, I got a cap. All right, now let's. Yeah, okay, I'll figure it out. So yeah, let's put the cap on. You've got you see all you, you got a lot of options here. Yeah, I, I think I'll go with the red one, that's fine. Whenever I do wear a baseball cap, I like to wear it behind like that. Alright, so right here's the pool. You know what I'm talking about? I mean you always see this in these these astronaut movies too. Let's get in and see what it's like to travel in zero G ish. Moon shovel. Alright, so this is supposed to simulate what it's like being on the surface of the moon. And from here we can dig up uh, moon rocks. Which we'll be able to use later on. Our ARP was talking about this. Alright, killer. What else is down here? Anything else? Oh, there's one more. Alright. I realize this is pretty basic stuff, but, you know, how often do you get to be an astronaut? I, I really got to give this game credit in um, finding an intriguing kind of, what, full lesson complete, oh yeah, right, okay. Uh, finding an, an, an intriguing subject matter that you just don't see a lot for a video game. And, you know, make it account kind of educational. This thing's a blast. Okay, you old school Atari fans may find this uh, especially intriguing. All right. Okay, so there's always some... I gotta tell you, this... this uh, tilt the Wii vertically... I don't even know why I'm bothering. No. Sorry. Let's go. Every time I try this thing, it is like a nightmare to pilot this this lander. <laughs> but it is fun. This was an old, old Atari arcade game. Lunar lander. Oh my god. Uh, 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 you gotta land on these three destinations here. But you have to do it delicately. And more importantly, well, just as importantly... No! Oh! 
I suck. You know, that's what I get for being impatient. You have to do it before your fuel runs out. But, you know, in my defense, this game's, like I said, this game's got a lot of heart. And you're gonna learn a thing or two about the space program. Whoa! Why did that happen? Alright, well I got one more, one more here. There's no reason I should have blown up there. Alright. Oh, do I have to do all three? Oh my god, I do. Okay. Alright, hold on now. Please be careful. Please be careful. Delicate, good. Come on, baby. This one's for you, Ma! Yes! Alright, we did it. Killer. So while that's fun, the controls are not spot on for this, I have to admit. Uh, this whole interface of me running around is is almost like using a mouse. I didn't do that! ARP, you're killing me. Let's talk to some of my, my fellow campers here. The MAT made me dizzy, that's that spinny thing. We may do that one more time on our way out here. Is there somebody to run over here? What do you have to say? The gym is better than the one at the school. Oh, right, the gym. Actually, let's go check out the gym. Good segue, pal, thanks. I got the same thing to say. One day I want to go into space. Hey, don't we all, pal? Whoa! Did he just lift his leg? Was he... Was he about to lay one on me? I do like shaking my hand here. Yeah! All right. Get me out of here. Okay, we got a little bit of time. Uh, we got about seven minutes or so, so let's go hit the gym and get a workout. So the gym's right down here. And this is a really nice touch. It's not just space travel, because you know you got to be athletic if you're going to be an astronaut. So there's the gym. Oh, okay, so this, this locker actually needs a special item to open it. Which we don't have. So we've got a basketball court here. There are this? I'm not even touching you! That stupid robot won't be quiet. You know, a side note. The movie we were talking about earlier, Space Camp, it had this robot named uh, Jinx. And it was like, you know, every kid movie had to have like some kind of likable... You know, unhumanoid thing. This was like two years out of AT. Okay, so actually a year out of it. So yeah, uh, I think Jinx like misunderstands one of the kids, and he reprograms the thing to to send them into space. You know, typical dumb robot stuff. A little shuffle puck. Nothing an eight-year-old likes to do more than play a game that's made for seventy-year-olds. All right, now, I think um, I want to go for two grand. This is kind of more of a fun thing than anything. There's no real goal. It's a point goal, so we're going to make our own. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and get a thousand. See if I can do it. I'm sorry, two thousand. Two thousand. Oh, so close. All I got to do is nail two of those pretty well. This is it. This will be a thousand. Easy. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh. Alright, I'll knock that one in. This one's for Mom. She always wanted me, me to be a champion shuffleboard player. Boom. Alright, I only need 800 more. I got four more pucks. Or are they flying saucers? do a little ricochet action here although I think I needed more of an angle whoa maybe not oh at least give me 20 all right eight eight hundred I really need another thousand 
Should I just punch him down the line? Let's see what happens. Rolling him hot! Oh, oh. It's still a thousand? <laughs> what was that sound? I don't want to really want to do that again. Cripes. I'm gonna have to separate these two in an effort of being able to. Oh god, I have no idea how to hit this. That was way not enough. All right, let's put our hand in, in face because there's no strategic way to get in there at this point. I, I botched it that badly. Oh, it's so close, dude! All right. All right, let's play a little basketball and then we'll head over to the boogie segment. I botched it. You'll notice the load times here are pretty bad. Most of them I've cut out for you guys. I will say that's one problem with this game. There's a lot of loading in between. You're not going to notice most of them, but I put this particular load screen in just so you guys have an idea of how bad they are. And every time we go into a mini game, imagine that one of those is there, okay? All right, let's play some basketball. So, talk about terrible controls with this thing. <laughs> this is like... There's nothing realistic about it. Oh, we're going for 50 points. Come on. Come on, give me 50. I know the commander's high score is 40. Well, you can do better than that old fart. Come on. Are you bored yet? No! Oh my god. I'm gonna get thrown out of space camp. <laughs> great job! There's nothing great about it. Oh my god. They're gonna make me turn in my robot buddy. Okay, let's head on back here. Where's the... Uh... Let's head on back from, from Huntsville. Disengaging audio. Killing video. Get these stupid headphones off my head. I'll tell you what. The most difficult thing about these voyages are, is, is the headphones. I hate having to take those on and put them back on. It just slows everything down. Okay. So, has some fun stuff in here. Um, I think we got two major deals, I would say. Pretty good. It's, uh... I mean, the days of walking in and just getting, like, a box full of stuff just isn't happening right now. I don't want to say it's never going to happen again, but everybody's very savvy these days, okay? All of the used game and stores have really caught up with online prices. Uh, more often than not, your, your pawn shop dealers are uh, very aware of what they have. And while they, they're, they're not necessarily not going to cut you a deal if you're a regular, there are a lot of the new you know you're, you're gonna meet more often than not these days pawn shop employees who want what they're getting in they know you know they're, they're just starting to want these old games or these games you know um so it's it's becoming more difficult to be sure but a little persistence and certainly a little uh congeniality don't forget that can sometimes help you find a deal. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got today. Uh, the first one is more of a curiosity than a deal because I never see these. And this is the first time these have ever come into the hold. 
So these are like super exciting uh, for me because you know we find we find Atari games here. We find 7,800 games, 2,600 games. Uh, we've even got an old Atari Lynx floating around in the hold. Uh, we have never had a, an Atari Jaguar because they just they almost seem like they're too much trouble. We've got a 5,200, but what we don't have is an Atari 400 or an Atari 800 computer. These are computers that were kind of in the same era of uh, the Commodore 64 or the CX Spectrum or the Texas Instrument computer. It was basically a keyboard with the, the computer built into the keyboard. And on the side, you could plug in cartridges. So as much as these things were you know, in the day they were they were computers more than they were gaming systems. Today, these older computer systems are, are more like gaming systems for guys like guys and girls like you and me. So when I saw with some Atari twenty six hundred games, some Atari four hundred and eight hundred games, despite us not having one of those systems, I had to grab these. So check this out. And to give you an idea of the difference, we grabbed one 7800 game for a really good deal. Uh, Donkey, Kong, Con Donkey Kong Jr. Let me get the autofocus. Hold on a second. They're like, oh, not the autofocus. You got a DK Jr. there for the 7800 for a great price, a uh, buck fifty. That's a good deal on 7800 games these days. Especially, you know, good titles like like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. It's ridiculous. People are trying to get like 10 bucks for Donkey Kong for the 7800. Anyway, let's take a look at this thing. Let's just take a look. Because you never see these. Now this is Centipede. It's a game you, you, you get on the 2600 quite often. But look at how small in comparison to a 7800 game these are. Look at that. Pretty crazy, huh? And look at that bottom. You've got the spine here. This says left cartridge. I mean, is, it, is that telling me that... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what a four, Atari 400 looks like. I mean, if I saw one in a thrift store, if it didn't have the Atari label on it, I probably wouldn't even know what it is. Um, this back's got a stupid pricing sticker on it, but that's the back. You know, it says Atari on it. And then I think the most intriguing part is, is where you would, uh, plug it into the system. There's like, almost like a button that retracts. I can't seem to retract it very far myself. But I assume it, it would plug into the, the computer correctly. So yeah, it's much smaller than than your your average Atari game. All right, we got a couple others that we found. He got kicks by Tato. This is like crazy to think that uh, a Tato game was on the Atari. I mean, I guess uh, Space Invaders was made by Tato, but. I was really shocked to see Kicks on there. I don't think Kicks ever made it to the 2600. I don't think it's on the 7800. It's on the Lynx. <laughs> it's on the Atari Lynx. Uh, okay, another one. Another one of these great uh, CVS software carts that we've seen in 2600 form, but here it is in four, 400 mode. Crazy Critters. I don't even know what kind of game this is. I think I think I may have looked this up because I was very curious about these. Uh, it says, oh, it actually says on there, Blast Invaders, Alien Attackers to Save Your Starbase. So it sounds almost like Space Invaders. Man, I don't know. Uh, and then finally, the coolest looking one. And again, shocking to see this on an Atari 400. You have um, Midway's Wizard of War. And check out that lettering. 
Is that not the coolest? It's got like this really neat uh, eagle on the back. I don't know. Fascinating. No button on that one. Absolutely fast. I'd love to see what the Wizard of War looks like on a, on a Atari 400. Crazy to me. Uh, and then finally, just some, some market stuff. We got those, uh, the, the DK Jr. and those games for $1.50 each. That's basically kind of run of the mill of Atari. Atari seems to be the only thing that you can kind of get at a flat rate these days. God bless. Um, and while I don't think we'll ever find an Atari 400, I couldn't leave like Wizard of War behind looking like that. I just thought those were too cool. And, and I wanted to share with you. So we grabbed them. Um, in addition, we grabbed, this is great. Uh, for five bucks, we got the Sega six pack in the pack, in the box complete. Um, this is a game that I would suggest to anyone who's getting their Sega Genesis. What a killer combo. It's got the manual. This was actually the first game when I got a Sega Genesis about three years back. Really got back into recollecting after years. This was the first game I ordered online for the Genesis because let's take a look at what's on here. You got all the hitters. You got Sonic the Hedgehog. Golden Axe, Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, Streets of Rage, and Super Hang-On. Uh, I mean, what a combination. This is really all you'd need for your Genesis. I mean, plenty of excellent one-player and two-player action there. We had a copy in the hold, but to get it in the box with uh, the manual I was really excited about. So, uh, I'll take a double. If it's if it's a, a Genesis box, I really want. So we went with that. Uh, and then finally, we got the uh, the lucky number one. Uncle Scrooge's lucky number one dime for Disney Infinity. This has really no value whatsoever. But I'm going to give it to my sister and my nephew, and uh, you know, at least my nephew will have a little taste of Ducktales. The magic of DuckTales like when I was a kid. Now this thing's fascinating. This is actually the reason I came into the store. I should have started with it because I'm going in reverse, but that's okay. Uh, one of my informants out there was nice enough to give me a text and say, Hey, Cap and Raz, what do you think of this? For a buck fifty, we found Atari's Star Raiders. Look at that. And I mean, the box art alone. The box art alone. Take a look at that guy. This is for the 2600. And you'll notice how big this box is. It's a mammoth. It's huge. And you say, Captain Rez, why is it so darn big? Well, in addition to the game, you're getting a little control panel there and some overlays to act as your onboard computer as you sail through space fighting off alien baddies. If we unbox this guy, which I haven't looked in here yet, so let's look together. Oh, you've got a, a brilliant looking copy of Star Raiders. And this may be the only box Atari game we have in the hold, I think, and this thing is, this thing could be mint. This thing could be, I think this is sealed. Does that seem sealed to you? Look at the, the little hanger. Wow. 1976. And so there's a comic book in here too. New Inside Volume 3 Atari First Edition Action Packed Comic Book by DC Comics. That was one thing that Atari was doing at the time. They were, they were... Joining up with DC to make a, a comics based on some of their properties, including uh, Yars Revenge. I think that's probably the most well-known. So here we have the touchpad. You know, eat your eye, eat your heart out, uh, eye touch. Is that still relevant? I'm so out of touch. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know. 
I think it might be missing the overlay. Because here you're seeing the buttons are labeled. This thing on the other hand is just like this. It might be in with the game, but I kind of doubt it. I would think it'd be put in with the touchpad. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's in here. It says it's video touchpad overlay included in the carton. Is this the carton? I don't know. Who knows? Um, but it's in really nice shape. And now we can go fighting the fighting through the galaxy, raiding the stars. So for a buck fifty, pretty hot pickup. If you ask me, Star Raiders for the Atari. But it wasn't a pickup. Again, this is you're being nice to people, and so they're they're remembering you and taking care of you. Okay. Keep that. The game store deal. You got. Three bucks, six bucks, seven fifty, eight fifty for the lucky dime, five bucks for the six pack. Man, that's less than a dollar a Genesis game. Uh, seven bucks, twelve fifty, and then Star Raiders brings us to fourteen bucks. Not bad, not a bad deal. And now that I think about it, I think the lucky dime was was free. All right, we'll just. I'll just put the antique cartridges over there on the floor. All right, let's get back to Space Cam. Uh, Mom, I love you. Thanks for putting up with this. Uh, you know, get your mom something nice this year. Or at least find something that she loved that she had to give up to have you, darn it. Okay? And remind her about it. And thank her. All right. We're going back to Huntsville, Alabama. It's Space Camp for the Nintendo Wii. All right, engaging video. Engaging audio. Yeah, I know. Communication's down. Get us back up, Uhura. All right, here we go. Where are we at? Okay, so we're leaving the gym because I'm terrible at everything. We've got a couple more things to explore. Now, Commander Higgins give us, gave us those moon rocks. Let's go break them up. Oh, aren't you excited? <laughs> to be honest, this is one of the more boring things here. Alright, does any of this make sense? The arrow shows your target, hold B, and twist the weed. Does it? I mean, come on. Let's just get this over with. Uh. Uh, okay. Twist and move. Alright. Makes perfect sense. I think I got three more of these. Firing up the generator and attack. Okay. All right, I got it. Give her some charge. Oh boy, that's too much. Oh, worked out fine. All right. I think I'm going for the inside of the arrow there. It's our last one. All right, cool. We're done. Oh wait, I thought we were done! How many of these do I have? Is that it? Please let that be it. Thank god. Okay, so... Yeah. Congratulations. You now have many. Please locate items All right, we're, we're on our way there. So obviously, um... That's kind of boring, but you, it's neat to see you've got a little crafting going on here. And so let's go and make that item fabrication thing. And it says it, it's a connection conduit. Isn't this the item that we needed to open that locker in the gym? Maybe we can use one if I can manage to make it. All right, let's get started. Oh boy. Is this how a 3D printer works? Oh god. Oh, oh, okay, that wasn't. Wait, no, no. Hold on, we're back on track. Oh god. 
Oh, one second! Oh! <laughs> no! No! I'm done! That's enough! I botched that because there's something in the way of my screen, everybody, okay? You're not all item fabrication experts, just for the record. Alright? Oh, the load times. Ugh. Why did I talk during this load time? I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Good job. You have constructed a connection conduit. Thank you. Here is a new patch. Alright, now let's see what else is going on here. Oh, this thing's fun. So the fire suppression training. <laughs> yes! You're in the kit you're in the shuttle and everything goes on fire. Now I'm Oh god, I'm talking to the load screen again! I'm sorry! The last thing you want to do is look at me as I'm going on about this, but let me just paint the picture. You're in space, you're in a shuttle, and all of a sudden everything starts to burn. Who built this thing? Come on, baby. Uh, there's one. Again, using the Wii mode for this. Ra rapid motion sensor action. Okay? Oh, get that one. Yeah. Yeah, try and do this on your Xbox One. It's not gonna happen because no one would green like this in 2016. Oh god, it's getting hot in here. Eight seconds. Come on, sweetheart. Hold together. Oh, jeez. Ah! Did we do it? Oh my god. Whew. Oh, thank you. Here is your new patch. Killer. All right. Uh, oh, is that the locker? Hey, we should go back and open that locker in the gym. Black and blue pants. I'm not gonna put black and blue pants on. All right, but let's go back to yeah. We'll go. We'll go grab that real quick. I don't know how much time we have left, but there's one more wing we want to look at. We'll just explore all there is to see in our little space camp, and then we'll wrap up for the mailbag. We'll see what you out there had to say to this magical little ship that rides the Silicon Seas. Oh, okay, I need to repair the circuit in order to get the treasure inside. Okay. Alright, I got this. Uh, okay, so let's switch these two. And then let's... Uh, do that. Good. And then... Uh... That's not gonna work. Okay, we'll put that there. Put the... Oh, jeez. Oh, I can hear everyone laughing at me. Can I move these? No. Uh... Huh. Wow. Alright, well this is the only one that goes up. That's gotta be there, right? And then this would have to be there. There we go! Alright, cool. What was our reward? What did we get for that? What did we get? Red glasses? Cool! I'll put them on! I'll take some new glasses. Killer. Alright, let's head over to that other wing. The next wing we're going to, the final wing, is the robotics area. 
What do you have to say, sir? I wonder what it's like on the moon. Oh, I know, man. I wish we were down there. Oh, lunar locker. Oh, kind of okay, but I like my Space Camp shirt. Where's the Mars rover? There are two robotic rovers on Mars right now. They are Spirit and Opportunity. And they save us pictures of the red planet. Oh, send us. I absolutely love just the little informational stuff they throw in here. I think that's great. And I also love that all this is open world. We're, we're taking our own time to do this. Robot upgrade computer. This is a fun little tool. You can change the color of your ARP. I'm going to make mine blue. Get him a paint job. You're looking good, pal. This thing's kind of boring. This is basically a claw machine. I hope we're going to do that, but we'll definitely do the Saturn probe launcher. Because... The last time that I tried to do this, I utterly blew it like three times in a row. So we're trying to get our, our ship through the... Uh, Through the rings, through the space rocks, to get to the planet. Oh! Oh, that was close. And again, my vision's obscured a little bit. But I think I'm doing okay. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There we go. We're doing good. Four more. 20 seconds. As long as I don't botch too badly. Oh, okay, that's not good. Ugh, no. I'm out of time. Oh, come on! My Wiimote control failed me! Ugh. Do I want to play again? Alright, one more time. One more time. Go! Oh, that failed me again! Ugh, now I'm gonna botch it. These are going too slow. Why did I do this a second time? Wasn't once enough of a humiliation? Can we cut this in post? Come on, baby. Six more, 25 seconds. Go, 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 go! Almost there. Go. Go, go, go. Oh my god. Go. One more. Uh, go. Oh! <laughs> oh, That's so lame. No. Get me out of this. Uh, that sucked. Okay, so let's... Oh, wow, we're way over. All right, I want to try one more little event here. We're way over. Well, let's do it for Mom. Okay, I'm sorry. This is too much fun. All right, so this is awesome. Defend the cities from the meteorites. Problem, I got this. This is for Saturn. I'm doing it, Ma. I'm doing it. Oh, whoa. See that almost spin? Nice. Got them all, baby. Fantastic job. 
You protected enough of the loot. We are all done here. Commander Wiggins to Command Command section. Okay. Let's go talk to this guy real quick and then we'll wrap up. You've done it! All 12 patches in record time as well. As you can probably guess, you're the first one to collect them all. Here are the Space Camp Wings. Are you ready for oh, the yes. rest of your reward? All right, we're going to head out okay. to the rocket now. The Lunar Lander 1 is the pride of the Constellation Project. And you're about to sit in an actual cockpit that astronauts use when hmm, traveling not to like the, the movie. A very important note, though. Don't touch anything this is a very sure, fast sweat. machine why we're letting people inside it is beyond me but i don't make the rules yeah so yeah give me in there nice well here we are we're in the real rocket prepped to head to the moon this one's for you, Ma. Hit it! With little warning, engine to ignite. And roar, and everything begins to shake. Why didn't I listen to Commander Riggins? You think in panic as the rocket slowly begins to rise. Entering the void of space, you see a silver sphere, and your fear turns into excitement. You're going to the moon. The moon. That's right. We made it. As the landing module settles down, you realize your space camp adventure has only. So yes, there is more to uh, Space Camp, but that's an adventure for another day. All right, uh, let's get a, a, a mailbag question in here real quick. We have a special one here from uh, Navigator Tracy, all the way in Illinois. She asks, what is your favorite memory of your mom from your childhood? Sincerely, Navigator Tracy, my favorite memory of my mom from my childhood. This is why we do these live. Because you're putting me on the spot. Um, probably when I was 15 or 16, I had been in the Boy Scouts for about a year. And I, you know, I was doing okay. I had friends there, but it was like a lot of work. You had to go to these meetings every Monday, and there were like these campouts where they were. It was cold, freezing cold, and you know all I wanted to do was play video games. I wanted to stay home and play video games. So I think a year in, uh, one night in the living room. I mentioned uh, it was toward the end of the school year in that kind of transition area by, by uh, you know, when summer camp happens, uh, when, when, when summer break happens, that I said to her, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go into scouts anymore. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. She's like, no, you're going into Boy Scouts. I'm like, but I don't want to. She's like, I don't care what you don't want to do, Okay. I grew up in the city. We didn't have anything like this. I grew up as a girl. We didn't have anything like this. You're staying in Scouts. And she pushed me. And um, I stayed for the next, you know, what would that be, another two, three years? Until it was time to graduate, I became an Eagle Scout. And uh, I learned some really valuable lessons. Had some amazing adventures. Uh kayaking and, and canoeing and hiking and overcoming challenges and doing things I never thought I'd be capable of uh, leading and um, doing good for the community 
You know, I did. I probably was a better person then than I've ever been since. So I think her pushing me to do something, whether I liked it or not, and in the end it being one of the most valuable experiences of my life, I think that's one of my favorite memories that I have of my mother. So thanks, Mom. Um, thanks for pushing me out of the nest. I needed it. Uh, thank you, Navigator Tracy. We appreciate the question. If you have a question for the Gaming Galleon, please send it to GamingGalleon at gmail.com or send it in a, as a comment on any of our previous voyages, of which there are many. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Do something nice for Ma. Anything you can, okay? It's one day out of the year. Try not to be so selfish for once. Um, I hope you have a good time. And keep those smiles about you. Okay? We'll see you next time. Do I have a drink? God, I hope so. On another adventure. And who knows what. And who knows where. Who knows who we'll run into. Whatever happens, though, we're going to do with a smile. We'll see you next time. And until then. Farewell and adieu. To ye Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu. Ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to sail on to Luna. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. I swear, Ma, I'm going to shave soon. Keep your powder dry, mateys.